In this chapter, we will learn about the effective sowing techniques along with nutrient management, weed management, and water management. Sow the sprouted seeds uniformly on the seed bed, having sufficient water in the nursery. In the traditional process of transplanting rice, several essential steps must be followed to ensure the healthy growth of rice plants. First, seedlings must be carefully prepared, ensuring they are of the right age and vigor. Second, the paddy field needs to be adequately prepared, with the soil being appropriately leveled and flooded to create the ideal conditions for rice cultivation. Then, in the critical step of transplantation, each seedling is delicately placed into the flooded field, following a precise spacing pattern to allow for optimal growth. This step is usually a labor-intensive task that takes considerable amount of time. A rice transplanter is a specialized agricultural machine designed to efficiently transplant young rice seedlings into flooded fields, streamlining the labor-intensive process of rice cultivation. It significantly enhances the productivity of rice farming while reducing the physical strain on farmers, typically reducing planting time by up to 50% or more. Firstly, let us understand the basic nutrient recommendations for a hectare of farmland. Nitrogen, an approximately 120 to 150 kilograms per hectare. Phosphorus, P approximately 60 to 80 kilograms phosphate per hectare. Potassium, K approximately 60 to 80 kilograms potash per hectare. During this stage, which spans from planting to the first month, nitrogen should be applied at a rate of 20 to 30 percent of the total recommended nitrogen, which equates to roughly 24 to 45 kilograms per hectare. Phosphorus and potassium should both be maintained at 30 to 40 kilograms phosphate and 30 to 40 kilograms potash per hectare. Moving on to the tillering stage, which extends from the first month to the second month, nitrogen requirement increases to 30 to 40 percent of the total recommended nitrogen, approximately 36 to 60 kilograms per hectare. Phosphorus and potassium levels remain steady at 30 to 40 kilograms phosphate and 30 to 40 kilograms potash per hectare. As we progress to the panicle initiation phase, spanning from the second to the third month, nitrogen maintains its requirement at 30 to 40 percent of the total recommended nitrogen, translating to approximately 36 to 60 kilograms per hectare. Phosphorus and potassium continue to be applied at 30 to 40 kilograms phosphate and 30 to 40 kilograms potash per hectare. During the critical heading and grain filling stage, which extends from the third to the fifth month, nitrogen demand increases significantly to 60 to 70 percent of the total recommended nitrogen, which amounts to approximately 72 to 105 kilograms per hectare. Phosphorus and potassium levels should still be maintained at 30 to 40 kilograms phosphate and 30 to 40 kilograms potash per hectare. This stage covers the fifth and sixth months, nitrogen application should be reduced to prevent excessive growth. Phosphorus and potassium levels should remain steady at 30 to 40 kg phosphate and 30 to 40 kg potash per hectare. Finally, at the harvest stage, which occurs after the sixth month, no additional application of nitrogen phosphorus or potassium is necessary. In conclusion, effective nutrient management throughout a crop's growth stages is vital to achieving optimal yields and maintaining soil health. A pre 
Margins herbicide called Pritilachla with a safener is applied at a rate of 0.3 kg per hectare. After the rice has grown a bit, about 3 to 5 leaves, and the weeds are small but growing, a post-emergence weedicide to 4D is applied. The recommended dosage of to 4D is 500 to 1000 grams per hectare. Keep a thin film of water and allow it to disappear. Avoid drainage of water. This will control germinating weeds. This can be better managed by a cultivator or weeder attachment as it can help with shallow weeding and soil cultivation to control weeds while the paddy plants are young. Not only this, cultivator or weeder attachments also help in reducing labor costs, saving time, preventing soil disturbance, conserving water, and enhancing crop health. They also minimize the need for chemical herbicides, resulting in increased yields and promoting environmentally friendly farming practices. After sowing, drainage of water should occur within 18 to 24 hours to prevent water logging. It is crucial to ensure that no part of the seedbed experiences water stagnation. Gradually, over the course of the third to fifth day, allow sufficient water to saturate the soil. After five days, the water level can be increased by about 1.5 cm, depending on the height of the seedlings. Subsequently, it is advisable to maintain a consistent water depth of approximately 2.5 cm. For maintaining consistent water levels in paddy fields, solar water pumps are quite effective. They draw water from sources like wells or ponds, distributing it to the fields for precise irrigation. Equipped with controllers and sensors, these pumps ensure the required water depth for various growth stages of paddy plants, including transplanting, vegetative growth, and flowering. Solar water pumps offer cost savings through reduced operational and fuel expenses, leading to long-term financial benefits. Access to government subsidies, enhanced water management, increased land value, and environmental cost reduction are additional advantages of using these pumps. Thus, successful paddy cultivation essentially requires careful integration of sowing techniques, nutrient management, efficient water usage, and vigilant weed control.